Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic focuses on virtual reference services that can be used by virtually any library worker. My name is Shannon Single and I am an MLIS student at Valdosta State University. Libraries have increasingly found that their virtual reference services are being requested at a growing rate and providing resources to patrons remotely has been in high demand especially since the start of the pandemic. Since COVID-19 effectively suspended in-person activities, many librarians sought new alternatives to face-to-face -face reference requests. Librarians have proven many different resources to be effective in their libraries, and today we'll look at some models of services, both direct and indirect, that libraries can adopt or improve on to increase patron satisfaction as well as provide librarians with a variety of resources to save time and be more productive. Looking at the agenda, we'll be going over some key topics, including interactive technology, creating a new service model, looking at the metrics, direct and indirect virtual reference services, programming and adaptability, and finally, a look ahead to making those user service decisions for virtual reference services. So we'll begin by looking at some of the more common virtual reference services. These are reference services using interactive technology that most libraries and reference librarians may already be familiar with and using in their libraries. In a survey that collected 300 responses from 28 academic librarians, conducted in part by Marie Radford, Chair and Professor of the Department of Library and Information Science at Rutgers University, the study found that most participants reported that virtual reference services were in place pre-COVID, including live chat, email, and online information literacy instruction. Some institutions had already zoomed to online video reference consults as well. So an interesting thing they found in the responses was that training was highly requested, both in user services and the technology to use the services. And this is evident in the quote from Radford stating, it quickly became apparent, especially for live chat, that in ramping up to accommodate increased demand, librarians and staff required additional training in systems, sources, and procedures, including assessment. So in implementing these virtual reference resources, they were also finding that staff shortages, time restraints, and limited access to some of the technology solutions, materials, and information were obstacles in the transition from a traditional reference desk to the virtual reference desk. So in implementing measures to create and expand on virtual reference desk, um, we want to ask, okay, so how do we know what we're doing is making a positive difference in our community and on individual users? One thing that has made a positive influence for many reference librarians is the uptick in metrics since expanding or initiating virtual reference services. For the North Shore Public Library, the stats were very encouraging. Goddard states, since the lockdown began in mid-March, this is 2020, the daily average for ebook checkouts were consistently 52% percent above pre-COVID periods. And additionally, new users to the platform were consistently double and triple 2019 highs. Goddard goes on to describe his library support to the community while they were shuttered, stating, to help those who did not have sufficient broadband Wi-Fi to use these necessary resources and platforms, many libraries left their Wi-Fi on even when the building was closed to allow access to those in the vicinity of the building. In addition, many libraries purchased Wi-Fi hotspots to lend to their patrons. And according to 
Pew Research, approximately 25% of households do not have a broadband internet connection at home. So n we all know that numbers really do speak louder than words when it comes to metrics and justification for resources, programming, and services. Um, many libraries were pleased to see such a positive reception to their newly established services. So keeping track of all the virtual reference transactions are really important. So this information is really encouraging to see and is a great start to any reference toolbox. However, an increase in patrons using virtual services can also highlight other internal issues, especially in a library with staff shortages and reference librarians having limited time. Goddard, a librarian at the North Shore Public Library, states that the credit must go to the librarians who initially fueled and have maintained this level of service by rewriting the rules, creating a new service model. Once libraries closed, librarians promoted ebooks and other important platforms available to patrons with their library cards. The result? The checkout of ebooks and the use of these platforms rose exponentially. Community engagement became completely virtual with librarians and those who provide library programs to the public providing services on platforms that they may or may not have heard of, such as Zoom and Discord. When discussing virtual reference services, we want to distinguish between direct and indirect services. Direct services are formats that require the librarian or a library worker to be actively engaged with the patron in real time, whereas indirect virtual reference services are provided passively, or in other words, they do not require the librarian or library worker to be actively engaged in the reference request in real time. Usually this means that data has been previously collected and made available online through a variety of means, and we'll discuss some of these options a little later in the program. The pandemic restrictions brought these platforms into a major focus as librarians considered the hardships and insecurities patrons may find themselves in. The services highlighted here are meant to draw attention to some of the most effective and efficient platforms that libraries can use to bridge the gap in services for its community. Direct and indirect services ensure a wide variety of formats to ensure the highest possible accessibility to technology and information to carry out their academic, recreational, and vocational research remotely. With many different functions that can be added to the virtual reference desk, the goal is to make a seamless transition for those who are used to a more traditional reference setting. Some of the platforms we'll discuss can also be used for both direct and indirect reference assistance, such as social media, where one can live stream a program directly or can pre-record a program or marketing tool and post it at any time. Now we'll examine some chief actionable ways of adapting the library systems you already have in place to engage and support your library community. Keep in mind that having a variety of strategies will help to meet individual user needs and promote more accessibility to the user. First, we'll be discussing direct services. On the screen, you can see some of the more popular ways that librarians can use direct services with their patrons. Remember that all of these formats require the librarian or library worker to be actively engaged with the patron in real time using the platform. It's also important to think of every reference request as a conversation with a person rather than just a transaction to be checked off for the day. Some of these you'll be more familiar with than others, like a texting service or streaming on social media on Facebook or TikTok. Google Voice is a great option. Just remember to get a contact email in case the connection is lost. Microsoft Teams and SharePoint, or SharePoint can be used to expand the virtual reference desk into a web-based system so that um, that so many are using right now. Um, there's Zoom and Discord. 
and I've seen where the Zoom function was embedded into the chat box for the visual learners. So those who needed to view the screen of the librarian performing the search and actually hear a live voice had access to that. Bridget Farrell, Marketing and International Student Programs Librarian at the Ralph Brown Drahan Library and Casey Lucis, Architecture and Art Librarian at the Auburn University Library, found that popular examples of integrated reference systems include platforms such as LibAnswers, Question Point, and Question Tracker. And they go on to say that LibAnswers provided one system through which all employees could answer questions, simplifying training, login procedures, and billing for reference software. The most beneficial aspect of LibAnswers continues to be its easy to access reference transaction statistics. And of course, with these platforms, there's always the need for cross training staff and greater collaboration, transparency among departments, including circulation and reference. Slack, Google Chat, and Microsoft Teams make it easy to direct message and video conference or audio conference with library users for a live reference interview. This platform serves as a virtual walk-in during reference hours. Some chat services also allow for multiple language options, such as Spanish, Vietnamese, and Chinese. Okay, Ready Reference is the place where your virtual reference desk is probably the most well-developed already. Most special or academic libraries have some sort of web page or internal network site, which functions as a virtual Ready Reference shelf with quick links to the most commonly requested information. There are a lot of tools that you can use to expand this virtual shelf. Email can be a great virtual reference tool while not necessarily needing the reference librarian to monitor the organizational email. You can use other library workers, circulation technicians to help moderate and manage ready reference questions. With telework making face-to-face -face interactions unfeasible, even telephone interviews can become cumbersome. We rely on email more than ever, and that's okay. Email is cheap and quick and doesn't have to be boring. It can be very easy to integrate pathways to digital information, but there are ways of making it work harder and better. So how do we adapt email for a ready reference? You can save scripts for commonly asked questions like the required information for library registrations, scripts for renewal requests or curbside service instructions, and online database access. You can compose welcome letters for new library users, attach a library handout or user guide, compose newsletters, or create distribution lists or RSS feeds to get users relevant updates quickly without you're taking the time to compose a new email every time. Again, if your library is able, you can have other library workers help to field these ready reference requests, saving you much needed time for reference requests that require lengthy research. Beyond email, consider setting up a widget or bot that's programmed to answer simple ready reference questions about the library's services. Then there's your how-to guides, transcripts, pre-recorded videos for accessing online resources. And do not be shy with those. They are super helpful to patrons when navigating those online resources and databases. And do consider having an FAQ page. Generally, I find that when I'm visiting a new website, that's one of the first things I look for to answer my questions. Encourage your users to utilize the wealth of information found in your subscription databases, such as OverDrive, EBSCO, and ProQuest. If you have LibGuides already for resource guides, you can also use them for general reference or document storage. Bibliographies are another great reference tool, especially for academic or special libraries with a student population that will have similar information requests for many revolving classrooms. 
As part of your virtual reference desk shelf, you can also share online resources not affiliated with your institution. Let's not forget that there are so many free and user-friendly internet resources that can supplement any reference tools you are already using, like internetarchives.org, Google Scholar, the NYPL Digital Collections, and Z Library. Virtual programming. While not strictly part of the traditional reference desk, the library programming shows the reference desk goal of user instruction and community building. You can use the same tools you use on a daily basis for ready reference and research, research assistance to create virtual events with live and asynchronous components. Community can then participate at the level and in the best ways that suit them. Consider a live open house or an ask a librarian session. If time is a constraint, you can have guest host lead sessions for in-demand topics like arts and crafts or language learning. And don't forget that the material you, materials you generate, like how-to guides, video recordings, and transcripts, can then further augment your virtual ready reference shelf. The ALA website provides a reference tools bibliography listing web resources, journal articles, and vendor and platform services that can expand your virtual reference services in your institution. You can find that link in the references slide at the end of the program. To help you plan or improve your virtual reference desk, you can create a worksheet. It may seem a bit overwhelming to start, but I find it helpful to plan and organize ideas before implementing so that I know what resources I'll need. The one on the screen is called the Virtual Reference Desk DIY Worksheet. You can create your own rubric to help you lay out the functions you want the virtual reference desk to perform and a list of the tools that you have on hand to help you. It also gives some examples of what my library, my virtual library did with a virtual library reference desk. A similar worksheet can help you plan out your virtual reference desk by considering the resources and services you want to provide, identifying the tools you already have, and choosing the right tools to fill each function. It's important to keep your knowledge base up to date. The sky is really the limit to offering just about any information request to library users virtually. Through the lockdown, library patrons have been exercising, listening to concerts, taking virtual vacations, learning new skills, cooking, playing games, and reducing stress. This incredible adaptation was only possible due to library workers' quick thinking and a never-ending determination to help. We know emerging applications have transformed remote reference and programming and will continue to do so. So we need to plan to make time for refresher training, learning new skills with technology, and being open-minded to new ideas and presenting new ways to expand the virtual reference desk. Librarians must make data-driven decisions to evaluate, select, and implement only those aspects of the system that work best for their library and the community. While it is true that libraries are physical spaces, they are also technology-driven services for learning and connections for all ages. Additionally, they have shown that due to this new service model, access has exponentially expanded to new patrons, showing tremendous value when it comes to education and engagement. This new service model should be preserved. Programs that engage our communities should be both physical and virtual. Physical media and books should be provided both at the circulation desk and through a contactless service. Reference services should be provided both at the reference desk and through chat reference services. This must be our new normal. Even when that new normal is constantly changing, librarians have proven readily able to adapt quickly to changes in technology and ever-changing environments to meet their community's needs. Thank you for joining me today in my discussion of expanding the virtual reference desk in a post-pandemic environment. I hope you've learned something that will be of use to you in your future information goals.